What happens when you combine four walls, a racket, and a punctured ball? You get Typically considered an elite sport, Franklin and Marshall College is trying to change the sport's reputation. A squash in America is um is a very unique and uh, unique sport with um, only having squash in pub, uh, private clubs, country clubs, and um, Ivy schools and Division One schools. So squash has a long and storied history here at the college. Like many small liberal arts colleges, squash has always been played in primarily the Northeast or Mid-Atlantic regions of the U.S. And it's appropriate for these elite schools to have it because a lot of you know, the big wigs in major cities like Boston, New York, or Philadelphia um, meet and do business over squash. Squash at FNM has been going on for about 30, 40 years, and one of the attractions that we have is uh, we compete with all Division I and Ivy League schools, which in other sports at D3 schools, uh, that doesn't happen. So with that, with competing with Ivies and Division I schools, we get a lot of international students that, that come here that want to play competitive squash, and we have a great support network because of we play Ivies and D1 schools. So ACES stands for Attitude, Community, Excellence, and Scholarship. And it is actually stolen from a previous sport, um, Tennis ACES, which was started here at f and by Coach Patty Epps, who's now our athletic director. The one thing that we're doing here at Franklin and Marshall is trying to broaden the range of uh, squash by introducing it to people like squash ACES, um, kids in high school, middle school. And um, there's a lot of programs like that in the country now that are actually getting the sport out into these uh, public schools. And getting these kids to actually play squash. And ACE is a good program to do that. But also as well with the, uh, with the squash community in Lancaster. Uh, not all of them are members of country clubs. So what we try to do here is open up the courts to anybody that's willing to learn squash and then they come down, uh, they play, once you play you get hooked. So squash is actually getting bigger and bigger in America right now. The trick is, you know, how do you take what's really a small elite sport and broaden it for a larger group to, to spread the joy of playing, but also to, you know, kind of democratize the, um, the elite nature of these colleges. It really captures this combination of citizenship that we hope to instill in the youth um, who participate, also the concern for scholarship. That squash is fun and games, but it, 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 uh, the program, any program built around it, has to be bigger than that. It has to be about character development, has to be about service to the community, and it also has to be about you know trying to do your best in in whatever endeavor you have. And and for most kids, that's going to be school. So a big part of the ACES concept is to bring all of those different kinds of ways of being and, and talents together in one place. And so really anything could be called ACES um, if it were uh, trying to do this, but we had a great tradition here of the tennis ACES, so we just picked squash as well. And for me, squash was 
the most exciting sport ever. As soon as I stepped on the court, I loved it. It's, you know, you, you get to be so competitive to run around, hit the ball on the squash court. As soon as that door closes, to me, that's, that's your world. And you get to create and shape your world as, as you see fit. It's a difficult game to learn at first. Many people are frustrated the first time they try to play because the ball doesn't bounce very much nowadays. And it's hard to you know, direct it when you hit it with that racket. You haven't used that racket before. So there's a little bit of frustration at the very beginning because it's a hard game to pick up. I mean, in theory, there's no contact on the court. And that's really good as you age. So the older person likes to squash because um, you don't have to tackle your opponent. Um, you don't have to knock them down in any way. You don't have to take the ball from them. Um, it becomes more of a skill and thinking person's game. It's such a dynamic sport and it has everything. Tactical, technical, physicality, speed, power, agility. It has every single thing you need to be competitive in, in all sports mixed into, into a small little room. And the greatest thing about squash for me is you, know, you get to hit a ball against the wall, you get to hit as hard as you can. It's great for getting aggression out. And you know, it's a life sport. You can play it from the ages of five up until you're 90, 95 years old. Uh, squash Aces is a bit of a squash program. Um, it's basically uh, getting uh, inner city school kids and other privileged kids um, into, uh, into squash and help them uh, through squash and academics to help them to get into college uh, through the years. Uh, Aces has only been going for three years. Um, it's a very new program, but the urban squash program as a whole is very big in, in the United States. And our main goal is to use squash as a tool um, and help them with their academics and a lot of life skills and then hopefully then get them to graduate uh, high school and then um, get them on into higher education in colleges. Really trying to, if you will, um, expose a, a different demographic that hasn't seen squash before to the fun of the game and also to that um, more elite pipeline so that um, with Squash Aces and other similar programs, our hope is that the students will not only learn some squash, but they'll start thinking about college, and they'll start thinking about very good colleges when it's time for them to apply. So um, squash is hopefully just one piece of the larger democratization of the elite education environment. What's neat is to see a lot of the students at f and giving back to their community by participating in the Squash Aces program. And it's a very rigorous program. There's a lot of academics involved in Squash Aces, and the students have to, the students who want to be in the program have to apply and go through a very rigorous screening process. So it's just not automatic because of the, the you know, need to ration the space. So the kids have really embraced it. I mean, uh, they, they love playing squash and think it's very natural to do so. And we love that transition. But it took um, only a few years to make that happen. So we're able to make an academic part of the after school program very, very um, robust and alive. Poetry writing, service in the community, tutorials in math and reading. It's been great for the academic progress of the students. So it gets them um, you know, essentially thinking about completing their schooling, doing well at school as well as at athletics, um, and then also moving on to, to consider what it would be like to be at a college. And actually a lot of the uh, outreach programs in squash have had great success with getting students who otherwise might be at risk of not going to college to end up in college and play for their varsity squash teams as well. More and more, we're seeing access from public school kids. We're seeing um, 
middle school and high school participation. We're seeing a lot of clubs open their doors to special programs that are school-based. So even if the club itself has an exclusive membership, they're still bringing in a lot of kids from all walks of life to expose them to the sport. And, um, and also places like FNM opening their doors, it allows someone like me who doesn't have the money to join an exclusive downtown club, um, then I can still you know, play my sport every single day. But quite frankly, the game's moved. And I guess that would be the story, that the game has moved. And now it's no longer the province of exclusive, you know, high net worth, families paying a lot for um, coaching at the country club. That certainly goes on, but that's not the only place that squash is living right now. And it's the same phenomenon we've seen with golf and tennis. Previously very exclusive sports, hard to find, but now with the provision of facilities by municipalities and um, by you know, more and more schools, um, it's democratized quite a bit. So now anyone can imagine being a Tiger Woods um, or a Pete Sampras. Uh, you don't need to belong to the country club to pursue that in golf or tennis. Um, it's going to be the same way with squash. And so there will always be a role for an elite you know, private club to have some squash boards, but that's, the game is moving. So that's the big story.